mid lane as the silencer and force Geek Fam to have to rotate these I heroes through because that. it's very much a lane where Silence is going to win the last hit trading, so you need to kill him. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's easier said than done. I mean, he's not a super fast hero. Got decent stats, though. I don't know. I, I, I get what you're saying where you can like switch up the Weaver to a different style, but to me, then you your entire draft just feels very weird Ten now because remaining. to me, I feel like the, the whole idea of the draft was to sit behind the Death Five Prophet and have Ember like go around and poke and prod and make stuff happen. Radiant but now, pick. if you don't have that, and you don't have like a solid save for Death Prophet, doesn't she just get blown up by Morphle? Like, I, I'm really concerned about this Geek Fam draft. I feel like that silencer pick was super solid. Yeah, it was really solid overall. And it, it might make them rethink a lot of what they've done. I mean, they've themselves banned out the Oracle. So, what saves are really left in the pool for them? Uh, I, I guess like, Keeper again does a little bit of saving, but. You're in a really vulnerable position to get picked off by the Morphling that you need to be standing way back, uh, and you might not be able to get that blinding light off to protect your team. Yeah. Um, the Underlords banned out, and then they ban out the PL. So they're anticipating that this is a Death Prophet offlane um, for Cuckoo. Okay. Uh, whether or not that's the case is kind of still up in the air. God, I don't know. I really don't like the Geek Fam's draft. But then again, I've been known to be wrong time and time again. So who the hell knows? How did your Marana game go, by the way? <laughs> Out of curiosity, your pause three Marana game. Uh, there were a couple that went well. There were a couple that went poor. Um, you know, you have your moments. You hit a big arrow. You, you the, the biggest thing that I found myself doing is just being like the emotional leader of the team. You're like, don't worry, guys. It's going to be okay. We can do it. It's like it's 20 to 4, and we're just, you know, getting owned. It's, it's sad. Yo, CM, what is this draft? What's happening? Oh, God. All right, so it's a position 3 shaker then, and then silencer uh, mid? I mean, we could see pause 3 Chen. We saw 3-3 three, three do it when he was yeah. playing on OG. Yeah, that's true. That could be pretty cool. Um, Is Bok a Chen player, remaining. though? Not that I've Five seen all too remaining. much of. Hmm. This is this is very interesting. I don't know. I think Geek Fam lost, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh it's been it's been known to happen. I'm excited I'm to sure see they're this, scratching right? their heads as well. You know, they're gonna use every second of this minute forty, at least I would, if it was uh, my reserve time, just to think what could we possibly do? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh it's tough. Maybe you just like go all out I don't know. The coddle sounds better to me now too as like a form of wave clear just to try and buy time, but then maybe you still just get ran over. Uh Wyvern. I mean could they have be no cool? stuns. They have no stuns. Yeah. That's a big issue. Yeah, they have no stuns against a morphling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I mean the... Grimstroke, yeah, but if you're getting stunned by the Grimstroke, it's that's on you, you know. Yeah. Well, and it, it speaks again to that that side of Geek Fam's draft where it feels like they just wanted to be ahead and rolling, and then like sit behind this Death Prophet who just blows up towers. But it just it just looks really tough. It looks really really tough. I don't know. I could see this game being over in like twenty minutes. Um, I hope I'm wrong because I like to watch more Dota. Yeah, I mean, let, let's. Screw it. Full YOLO. Invoker. Let's go. <laughs> Last pick Invoker. What, what would the Invoker do? What's, what's the idea there? Uh, I guess crowd control of some sort. Tornado, okay. Cold Snap. That's really what I'm thinking. And uh, they've already gone with this Weaver pick, so they could go anywhere with it. They are using every second of this reserve time to try and figure out what to do to deal with this Morph Shaker. And right now, I am I'm not seeing uh, a whole lot. Um... Three, two, okay. Admiral Kong. Admiral Kong. It's a little bit of survive. You're not going to get burst down most of the time during a global silence, I suppose, but that's not the target that, that uh, a droid are going to be going on. All right, Boomy, pos for mm -hmm. Shaker. It is a pos three Chen. Yep. All right. Let's go, Bach. So what, for anybody that hasn't seen this, what is the idea behind the position three chin 
to be honest, I wish I knew. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's just, I suppose it just comes online a little bit earlier and it allows you, in this draft at least, to translate the lead that Max should have in the early game into more objectives. So maybe okay. it'll be like kind of a, a four protect one style. It'll allow them to get some towers early on. That'll get Boomy as Blink Dagger and they'll try and win the game at that point. That seems reasonable. Um, I like that idea. There, there was a game that we saw because it wasn't just 3 3 that did it. There was somebody else that did it just the other day, too. Um, I don't remember which game it was, but it was one of the ones that was happening during the Europe Hour. Uh, and uh, whoever was playing the Chen, they kept on converting over the first round range creeps. Uh, so they would take over the range creeps and then they would use those to last hit better because the range creeps deal piercing damage. Uh, and so they farm a little bit faster in the jungle than all the other. Uh, creeps do because they deal like 50 percent extra damage or whatever um so i don't i don't know if they were using those to farm or if they're using them to try and outlast hit or or what exactly was going on but it's kind of what was happening uh so we'll we'll see how it goes um it's going to be interesting to watch that's for damn sure uh that is for sure okay. and boomy's up there with bach right at the start I feel like this is going to be one of those, like what you were just explaining there with the piercing and all that, that uh, was done in the previous. You I feel like that's one of those galaxy right brain memes where like the brain go, keeps getting bigger and bigger, like picking Chen to do this, picking Chen to do that. <laughs> and then that, that last explanation was the exploding galaxy brain, you know? Yeah. You got to do it, man. You got to find a, find out what's really happening. Um, oh, I need to swap these actually swap fighters. And is it right? It's, hello. Save. Did it do it? Oh, yeah, there we go. Now they're on the right side. It's perfect. <laughs> um, so as you can see, betting-wise, feeling adroit's the one to, to do it right now, at least. Uh, we'll see if that ends up working out for them or not, or if the bet odds are going to be changed around a little bit later. Down bottom, Cuckoo is playing the DP offlane. Ha ha, mech mech. What is happening? Oh, my God. What's going on? I didn't see all this typing. <laughs> I mean, oh, are they... <laughs> Just sitting at the top of the top of the high ground there. I, I know I play a lot of my games on the Southeast Asian servers, but it doesn't mean I know what the hell is going on. That's fair. <laughs> That's very fair. Get out of there, Bach. They're coming for you. The I love that. He turns around and gives him one more punch. Oh, assert dominance, Boomy. That's right. Give him the fissure. On to three. You'll never see a more value fissure. And it is the pause for Weaver as well. So, Straight to the bottom with so something a little different. I mean, we were speaking about him a little bit earlier in the cast, but Lil, he's kind of the one that first did that, right? The yeah. Pos 4 Weaver? But yeah. he used the Geminate attack to harass. Yeah, and uh, he would also take, like, the Swarm early and, like, go and jungle level 1 sometimes. There were some games where he would do that. It was really weird. Uh, we'll see what Zephyr opts to go for. I, I honestly wonder if they're going to need... They're actually giving Zephyr a little bit more farm right now. I was wondering about this. If they're going to, like, give him more farms that that way... Wait, what? Hello? Zephyr? He took a <laughs> lot of damage there. Um, That was... Ooh. Oh, my God. That was very strange. What? What, what, what is, is he doing? doing? This guy's crazy. I... Okay. CML, he's ready to go again. Yeah. Um, all they need is level two on Morphling, and I think that Zephyr like comes close to dying. Uh, but we'll, see, we'll have to keep our eyes on that. As a Fissure gets the block off onto Raven, those creeps are going to deal some extra damage there. I'm confused. I, I'm just going to put that out there. I don't know what's going on. This seems like a pub to me. Yeah, it's very strange. Uh, Natsumi forced to waveform away. There is a pull that gets off here onto the side. CML Radiant looking fine and dandy. Another courier goes okay. down. Stomp a little bit off the mark. Okay. Oh. Just in. Yeah, that was very close to dead. But he lives. Does not have any salves. Does have tangos working. Top side. Fuck. Oh, there it goes. He, he didn't use his magic stick either. I think he might have lived if he popped it. Maybe he wanted to die. It's like, get me out of here. You know, I've had enough. Not oh. the first blood, surely. That's fair. Oh, oh and Max gosh. looks like he's going to have a good time here. Down bottom, CML looks like he will be also okay. Two more mangoes left, not quite level three yet. So that's a little bit concerning. 
uh, for the CM. Needs to get to that level 3 so she has mana regen afterwards. Yeah. I don't mind this though. The, the thing is, with this style of build on the CM, I played a lot. You need to get kills as a result. Right. And doing that, not getting your Crystal Nova off, well, <laughs> that's on Zephyr, you know? <laughs> it happens to the best of us. Uh, definitely has happened to me before. Rooted. Oh no, Cuckoo. He stuck around a bit too long. Waveform? Oh, three seconds away. Living. He knew he was doing it the whole time. Bok gets a stick off that time. Fissure lands. They will get the final touch, which finishes off Bok. Umi trying to do whatever right click damage he possibly can. Meanwhile, mid bottom lane, DP does end up going down to Natsumi. So they managed to get one last right click off onto him. White Mon's still living here. Although barely against Boomy. And it's going to be a long walk back for Bach. You know, some more action going on. Like, this is C Dota. This is the definition of C Dota, what's going on right now. Forget the creeps. Let's go for kills. Wouldn't surprise me if there was like 50 by the 30 minute mark. Yeah. Um, they're kind of just going balls to the wall. Now, the flip side of that is that, uh, oh, CML. In some trouble. In trouble. They got swarm. Got punches. They got a kill. And he's only got a wand. Yeah. The thing is, like CM, with that style of build that he went with the mangoes, you can actually get a kill very, very easily in the lane, especially against something like a Pos Four Weaver. But the fact that they didn't, uh, at least once, like the one that they got, they shouldn't have. Right. Um, but well, and it wasn't know, first like, blood either. That was yeah. The other problem. As soon as you're level two. It nearly guarantees you a kill. But unfortunately, did not happen that time. CML does come back with a full mana pool, so it can put the hurt onto Zephyr and Cuckoo a little bit there. Um, the big thing, though, you look at this other side of the map, mid lane for Mac, 23 and 15 versus Carl's 20 and 5. Uh, those denies are definitely racking up right now and almost a full, well, about a quarter of a level ahead of him. Uh, the bigger thing is the net worth. He's 700 gold ahead of that Kunkka. Yeah, and that's the thing, you know, range versus melee, always going to happen, but a silencer on top of that is just so punishing. And with all this uh, havoc that's happening in the side lanes, it means that no one has the free time to come through and try and harass down Max. So it's going exactly how a droid would want. Boomy here, trying to move over. Ah, the Fissure wears off uh, before the the chains do. So Geek Fam end up with three, it looks like, as Droid only able to pick up one on Natsumi with the bounty runes at five minute mark. And gives him the punch. All right. Five minute mark. A little bit less than a thousand gold lead right now. Still feels like it could be anybody's game. I, I don't feel like this Bok Chen is doing all that well uh, early no. on. Definitely not. This isn't what I feel like. They, they could have exploited this Weaver pick so much more uh, adroit, and it just hasn't gone their way at all. Oh, this three heroes mid looking to turn this around onto Mac. This is what he needs. Interesting initiation. The fissure to try and stop it though. Mac is going to get caught there and will eventually die. It was pretty cool. The uh, ink swell into the Sakuchi Weaver. That's a neat little gank. Yeah. And that extra little bit of speed as well. <laughs> Not for you. Jen has been doing a good job of getting these denies with all the creeps that he's got, as well as the last hits. He's starting to make this lane a little bit less comfortable for uh, Raven. If I say that, he just gets the last hit, but whatever. Rotation down bottom. There was some movement coming from Whitemon and Zephyr, but it looks like they're going to be taking their movement instead towards mid lane for another round of the Inkswell Sakuchi combo onto Mac. Does hit the torrent. That's pretty nice. The boat coming in as well. We'll be able to find that X back pull in. Stun and done. Easy peasy. <laughs> yeah, Geek Fam doing exactly what they need to at this stage. You know, had a stronger laning stage, you need to get the kills. There's no way in hell that uh, Kunk is going to have a game if that didn't happen. Yeah. Meanwhile, top lane, they find Ember. Not quite level six yet. Trying to punch him down. Get the. Well, he doesn't have any the points on the flame guard right now, but it's a little bit of a slowdown. He's looking like he's going to escape, though. Yeah, or even just. Gets the walk away. 
and you can see there the good decision by uh, Raven as well with his build just to go for the maxed out Sleight of Fist Searing Chain since he knows that Chen's going to have a Purge Creep in lane almost consistently. Yep. And right now he just wants stats. So he's going into those uh, Power Treads next. I think he's kind of forced to go into a Yule Scepter even more than usual because of that Crystal Maiden as well and the Silencer. Yeah. Oh, he's in danger now. He just got his level 6 though. <laughs> He could stick around a little bit longer. They're bringing in the Weaver right now. Instead, they're going to see if he can get out of there, jump onto Boomy as well as all those Gen creeps, the Stroke of Fate as well. And a God comes out trying to heal him back up. Carl moves into position. Kunkka, not enough. CML gets the kill. And now Carl's well, going a bit in. too far. They have the route to keep him under control, and he too is going to die. The recall coming from Bach to get Mac into the fight. They did it beautifully. Oh, oh they got Fisher, it. Raven. Oh, Global? They have it if they want to use it. They're not quite in range yet. CML gets the slow down. Not quite in range. They will finish him off right there. Raven manages to get his way out. But they, uh, value. Will, uh, they will put the pressure onto the tower, it looks like, though. Yeah. And if Mac wants, he can just TP back to the mid lane. Looks like they want to put some pressure, as you said, onto that top tower. Yeah, just the ability to move around the map is what makes Chen such a scary prospect. Hmm. That was nifty. Uh, so almost 10 minute mark now. It's a thousand gold lead for a droid who have made some really solid movement here. And with a Chen army beginning to be collected, Geek Fam, are they going to try and go for an aggressive move here? Zephyr's in the area. Again, they find the tower taken, get the stun onto one. A lot of bugs being thrown on global and just TP out. Nicely done. They both just get out. Yeah. I mean, what can you do? He's gone maxing the Sakuchi, actually, but I don't know if you have the uh, the mana pool to be able to sustain that. You go it for the damage a little bit, but it's more about the duration. Right. Surprised, yeah, he hasn't gone into more of the swarm. Hmm. Hmm? Let's see how it ends up working out for him. Uh, Natsumi, in the meantime, as he is wont to do, will just be taking up all of this space gladly. Uh, pressuring out the lanes just for a moment has a broomstick in his inventory on top of the treads in the mask of death so looks like they're going to try and hold on to this outpost here uh cuckoo could give up his life for this and if they can't break they don't have a way to break it okay he's going to give up though exorcism pops and immediately they can just run away i think oh inkswell tp away cml will go down but Exorcism for CM feels like an okay trade. If they lose this other tower, it would kind of suck from top lane. Boomy controlling, trying to find a kill. Atsumi did not have any points up in the silence for the DP, so he didn't have access to it to kill off the Weaver. Tactical greed by Cuckoo. Yeah. Not uh, getting any points in the silence. Amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm really liking the way that uh, Adroit took that previously, realizing the strength of their uh, their draft, looking to take the tier one tower on the top side. And now, I think previously, about, let's say, three, four minutes ago, the uh, Ember Spirit had about 3,500 net worth, and Morphling was down at about 3,000. But in that time, Morphling has been able to catch up so much and actually overtake. Mm. Even now, you can see on the top side, he's freely farming. Well, and Chen moving in now to try and hold on to this side of the map. Cuckoo in some trouble. No Give him the clap. There's so much damage coming from those creeps, as well as the CM. Pop the hand of God to make sure that he doesn't lose any of them. Dude, they did so much magic damage. Yeah, and again, that's just with the Shikuchi. I mean, if the swarm was a little bit higher, maybe it would have uh, done a bit more, but who knows? It's actually a, a really cool uh, collection of creeps that he's got here. The Helm of the Dominator, I'm not sure which creep it is, but, uh, oh, it's the uh, it's the Seder. But you've got, what, the Shockwave, so 160 damage. You've got two claps, which is 150 apiece, and then also a net to hold them all in place. And then afterwards, uh, all the bonus arm or damage, rather, coming from the Alpha Wolf. It's nifty. Just look on the map as well. You just see this giant line of purple. Yeah, I hope that's purple. I'm red, green, colorblind, but <laughs> you got it. You're killing it. Yes. <laughs> so again, the lead being a little bit widened here by Adroit as Natsumi continues to farm. 
there is still this danger of like an ember going off if Raven can have a really good game or if Kunk is able to get into the spirit vessel in a decent timing. Um, Ember's about to get ganked. So too is Boomy. As they get the torn afterwards. Connection for the finish. He goes down. I don't know why I said Ember. I meant Earthshaker. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it all starts with E. It's fine. Yeah. Instant smoke coming through now from uh, Geek Fam. They're looking to try and pick up a few stragglers and it'll be smoke running into smoke. Immediately going to be able to pop that global. And now the chase down. They want to kill off this Grimstroke. Soulbind on to two. Zephyr's in the middle of them. The boat goes out. Cuckoo also going to pop that exorcism, trying to bring them down. All oh, the creeps take a ton of freaking damage. Mac now turning on to Raven. After that global came out, it thought it was going to be good, but Geek Fam able to take the fight afterwards. Okay, so Geek Fam again, uh, good use of the exorcism, great use of the Geek uh, of the Grimstroke ulti before he went down, meant that they were, had a guaranteed uh, boat land onto them with them just trying to run in opposite directions. Have to be a little bit careful on Cuckoo. It's still a couple of seconds until exorcism God. heals him back Looking up. Looking for it. Follow up. No, he got the heal. Oh, and then it didn't quite get the block off. Damn, that was close. That was really, really close. Didn't lose the tower, though. So yeah, nicely done by Adroit. They're getting closer to that uh, Blink Dagger as well on Boomy here. And you can see now Morphling after that Mask of Death building into the Manta style and then straight into the Aghanim Scepter after this. So Geek Fam are on somewhat of a clock, you would have to say. Yeah. Radiant awesome. I mean, you still have to be a little bit concerned that, it, you know, as you mentioned, it's it's a clock. It's not as terrifying as it used to be uh, with the Morphling Shaker. I guess, what do they have that can disrupt it right now? You've got, obviously, if you can manage to land a torrent, silence doesn't stop it, right? You still land if you're uh, Morphling, if I'm not mistaken, in the spot where you're mm. supposed to. Yeah. Uh, oh, Atos. Atos. Fisher afterwards, moving in, looking for an Echo. Not going to find it. Boat's out there, so the Brum buff is going to be in good stead, Boomy. Enchant Totem, Echo Slam afterwards, and now the follow-up. It's a lot of damage. Is it going to be enough Freezing Field on top of Zephyr as well as Carl? But it's not looking like they're going to be able to kill him. Leashing up two. On the other side of the fight, they get the kill onto Cuckoo finally. Now switching into the Ember Spirit, rooting him. Natsumi wants more. He's thinking about it. But it is hard to get the angle onto Raven, who did manage to jump up and back home. So after all the ultis were used, Adroit stand tall and take the tier one. And they've got this Chen army, so they can continue going if they want. But it's 15 minutes, so the uh, the bounty runes, as well as the second set of neutrals, are much more of the priority. I think they've just pinged out this observer ward on the high ground as well. Hmm. CML's going to take it. He's hit, you're hitting your own, buddy. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. You know, game is hard. He um, dead. He's, he's, he's a dead, dead guy. Stun comes through, and a couple more punches. Fisher to stop it, but it just means that Boomy 2 is going to duck. That's not what you yeah. wanted to have happen. So he's... close to his Blink Dagger as well. Oh, that sucks for him. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking the uh, the Medallion of Courage on the Weaver. I think that's one of those items that's been getting these sneaky little buffs over and over again, becoming much, much more viable. And again, it's one of those things that still has a pretty decent range. So uh, it didn't suffer the Glimmer Cape or the Four Star treatment. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It's a nice one. Um, I think it did get some nerfs from when it was like super duper duper meta, but it's still yeah. very, very strong. Uh, another smoke up. They have vision right now on Mac. As he is completely surrounded, and I think he's just dead. He thought about globaling right there. They do have heal, Mac. No, it's not enough. He didn't have hand of God. And now Box just gonna, yeah, he's gonna die too. They got the X on him. Pull him back in. Take him on down. And well, that fight was not gonna work. Now in 20 seconds, they're gonna have Blink Echo available. Oh, and they're going for a Roche. Will they be able to take it fast enough? They're popping the Exorcism to try and make that happen. They have wards in the area as well, which is going to scout this out if there's any movement over to defend against this. So a smoke up immediately. The courier heads by. It's got the Blink Dagger on it. They're moving into position, but it's not going to be quick enough. The Exorcism, yeah. the Medallion, and the Swarm give them the opening. And now Adroit, they might be tempted into a bad fight here. Uh, Boomy looking for an opening. They take down one. Okay, Aegis is there. Jump in. Echo onto two. Global immediately afterwards with the Fissure follow-up. 10-11 times combo. 
And they took that fight beautifully. Uh, okay, so I, I was like, wait, who got the uh, who got the Aegis? But it went to Raven, and he was nowhere near that fight. So, yeah, great use of the first uh, Blink Echo and Boomy again. That positioning, just ideal. Getting on the complete different side. Bit of a risky move in case they had any sort of high ground vision, but you gotta risk it to get the biscuit. Absolutely. Fissure lands. Try to follow up Zephyr. Not gonna happen. So 11 to 16, very action-packed game that we got going so far. CML is just going to take a little bit of time for himself. This this warding combo right here, they they get the one ward down that's sort of in an area that's likely to get scouted, but then the second observer ward uh, sticks around for a long time and is in a good position there for Geek Fam. Yeah, so it's so hard right now to kill. Atsumi, he's going to give a decent little gold streak if they're able to do it, but on the flip side, Raven, he's also gone 6 and 0 so far, so this death point lead could even blow out to greater proportions if a droid are able to pick off the, the spirit. Yeah. I mean, he's not easy to kill, absolutely. Well, they just killed all of the Chen creeps. They were just running through middle. Ah, not great. Oh, Bok has at least the... Uh... Hellbear and the cent or the centaur afterwards, so shouldn't be too long before we can repopulate all of that. Another centaur here, Radiant are scanning. and an alpha wolf. Yeah, why not? You know, just the perfect creeps. Smoke to the Smoke, vision. They're gonna catch out. Oh, he gets the blink away. Nice reaction. And now they're chasing. They want to find somebody here. CML underneath the ward. Zephyr has him in his sights, but they want bigger target. Over for Mac, trying to find him. Off to the side. There's going to be the catch. There's in some trouble. Are they going to bring him down? Raven so low. They will burn through that Aegis in a freezing field. Off on the side. It's not doing nearly enough damage. Good four step, but Mac not quite enough to keep him alive. Can they find any more? Can Natsumi turn this for them? He turns, takes down White Mon. They've already lost another, though. Natsumi turning over into Ember, just laying into the Raven Ember Spirit, but not enough to get the kill. They take down Weaver by virtue of the tower and a root from CML who's out of mana. Doesn't have any more spells. Trying to stay alive. Spirit Vessel too strong. He needs a way to take that off of him on this morph lane. As three have already died for a droid, it looks like Bach will be the fourth. CML trying to keep him back. A good frostbite. A salve even thrown out. Trying desperately to stay alive. They wanted to get the... Tidebringer hit, and Coral actually almost goes down there to the Fissure. Cuckoo dying under the tower, but he manages to TP out as well. Oh, so they save Bach. Yeah, that is some C Doto, and uh, some good movements by Geek Fam. I wouldn't be shocked if they knew the exact timings on uh, the Silencer Ultimate, on the Earthshaker, Echo Slam, just because uh, Silencer, he died when he literally had one second left uh, before mm. he could use that Global Silence, and I think it was about... 10 or so seconds left on the shaker Bounty. when uh, that fight really went pear shaped for a droid. Bounty. Yeah, and it's now feeling like maybe things are going to start to come online a little bit more for a droid. Like that, that was a really good timing, but Geek Fam, you know, with that Aegis, they didn't really manage to get any more objectives. Like they didn't even get the tier one top. They just sort of ran at him to fight, and it, it feels like they're sort of, you know, missing the. The larger problem that's looming and coming towards them, which is this Morph Shaker that is going to be so hard to deal with. And Morph Wayne has an Imp Claw. Normally not the scariest item in the world, but if you've got level 4 Enchant Totem uh, on Boomy when Natsumi has that Imp Claw, people are going to die. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a big threat. And oh, smoke coming up from 4. You've got uh, Cuckoo pushing down in the bottom lane, but... Speaking about neutral items, the big thing that's tilting me, it's 21 minutes into the game, there is an Ocean Heart sitting in the fountain on Geek Fam's side uh -huh. with potential 5 to all stats, Dude. and Cuckoo has nothing. Oh my god, this ward has gotten them so much value. Global, turn around, BKB, Raven reaction. Trying to walk out of there, it ain't gonna happen. Mac is dead. This ward has literally got them like all of their kills over the last couple of minutes. So value so value and uh, well on the plus side for them the morphling illusions doing work pushing in the top side so in that uh, t1 tower is a little bit of a scary prospect 
Well, they're going to try and take down Mr. Carl right here. One or two more punches. Ah, and it's not quite going to be there. Now they got the X. Now they got the turnaround. Natsumi. Okay, sleight of fist, dodge, silence, turn, punch. Trying to live. Is in some trouble? The torn follow up. No, he gets taken down. Geek Fam striking back in a beautiful way as the overextension. Getting greedy again. Dude had ag yeah. he had agonims almost. Yeah, I get himself. Maybe he just wanted to finish it. You know, that's the that's the greed behind it. Yes. Oof. Tough stuff. Please get a neutral item, Kuku. He needs it. <laughs> Literally anything. You know. Yeah. I mean, Vampire Fangs is amazing. Oh wait, yeah. no, they don't have that one. Yeah, it would probably have to be Ocean Heart. I guess Grove Bow got left somewhere and they don't have it. it says it's unknown. Sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> top tower Just the ocean. Attack. Five to all stats. Who says no to five to all stats? I don't know. There, there. Uh, there's some silliness going on in this game. That's for sure. I mean, I, I, I can't say that it hasn't happened to me Radiance where I've just forgotten that. Attack. Oh yeah, items. <laughs> Neutral items. Yeah. Any well, he just got one. You know, he's got a dragon scale now. All right, I like it. Oh man. So BKB for Cuckoo next. How close are we to that Aghanims? 200 gold away. Atsumi should have it in just a second. And then where are they going to go? How is this fight going to work out? And then on top of that, he's nearly hit up onto his level 18 as well. So that morph is going to become much more of a factor. Definitely want to farm Radiant's that up before they take tower. the next team fight. And well, Geek Fam, they want to take it now. God, the anti-timing is so real for Geek Fam. They got to be careful. Gotta be real right, careful. We go. Morph Shaker, it's a thing. T18? Yeah, he is. Yep. All right. It's a lot of damage, and he has that Imp Claw. The amount of right click that's gonna come out from this is gonna be insane. It's gonna be like, what, a thousand damage or something? Yeah, and uh, Geek Fam have just gone full retreat. They yeah. know that something's happening. They, they're on the front foot. A droid wouldn't be trying the similar sort of thing if they didn't have something that thought that uh, they could win. Mm -hmm. Look at these double earth shakers smoking through mid lane. Yeah. Morph's about to wear off though, so. Uh, well, uh, don't do worry. It It'll be right back up again. It's back, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's crazy that this combination is still just awesome. this strong. Dire scanning. Alright, if they're really next level, Clips they would it. see those mangoes getting picked up right there. Uh, they won't. Alright, so a good job right now from Geek Fam to be avoiding the fight. Of course, this is the time where also Bot could just Ooh. recall somebody if there was a fight that came out. That was so close. No, there was just a, a centaur that uh, tried for a, a blind stun into a weaver, and it just missed by about half a second. Boomy's being about chased. To die, maybe. No, he backs out. He kn he knows. Danger has passed for the moment. Uh, Roche is probably the next thing that we're going to be waiting for a minute and a half till it will respawn. And Geek Fam, it looks like Zephyr here. Ooh, he gets a telescope. That's huge. Telescope and is going to have a... Uh, uh, God, why is it blanking on me right now? Lotus Orb as well. Mm. And all of these healing... Uh, <gasps> still echo. Oh, mid lane. Nice combo. Is there any follow-up? Second Echo. Oh, second Fissure. Jump through. Kill two. It's as easy as pie. And now the chase down for Cuckoo. Oh, God. It's begun. And it's going to end. How has this not been nerfed enough? It's just, it's never enough. <laughs> oh my god. Didn't it's, even need to use the M claw for that. Oh, it's ridiculous. It's not fair. How? How? IG how. IG how, exactly. I mean, look at how much damage this is going to be. With the Imp Claw, it's actually insane. 1,700 crits. Like, on such a low cooldown. It's silly. And well, we were talking about that timer. Yeah. He was just able to go through this backdoor protection if he wanted. They cut the creeps there, Natsumi. Main limitation at this point is mana. They're going to find the torrent boat. Not going to connect. Okay. And they just are confident taking down that tower and now backing out if they want to they can go right into the roche pit there's a dd rune right outside too yeah that's oh, scary god it doesn't seem fair it really doesn't 
guaranteed 1700 damage crit now a dd on top of it with the morph shaker shenanigans oh god uh they're yeah, gonna save think... the dd for after oh no okay, no gonna i think now. they're realizing that well all of geek fam are alive we don't want them to have it i mean it would have been super greedy to leave it in the river oh back up back up they're gonna see the dd rune there and then they're gonna realize okay this might not work do they actually see the dd getting some good they vision. gotta wait it out surely i, I don't know they if can't. they knew wrap around come in it doesn't look like they're acting as if they knew dd is about to wear off in a second he has echo back up in eight seconds okay living for the moment good silence there jump away afterwards still living but they take down boomy that's the hero that they needed to get they don't out oh, the root. Oh, they they got him caught. He's swifting down to the agi form. Natsumi's just dead. That opens up the Roshan. They this... had the global silence as well. Oh, this is such a big moment. Okay. I think it's still doable for a droid. You know, they don't want to use the buyback on the Morphling, but if they have to, they can. They've got this Earthshaker back up in 20 seconds. He can potentially impact this team fight. They're just going to yeah, go for it. Go. All right, he has buyback as well. Uh, giving up. To, I think you just give it up, though. Because I think you can you can hold it out. Because they can't go high ground right now with Geek Fam. With, like, DP. Without DP ulti, right? Mm -hmm. So they're going to give up this Aegis. They're not in any type of serious rush. Like, I mean, I don't know. Normally, the games just end at this point with Morph Shaker, right? Like, what happens yeah. with Morph Shaker late game? Uh, later game i mean it's still going to be really strong right it's yeah. just all of your damage is percentage based so it's just going to scale in that way but so uh, it does become a little bit harder you know weaver can then transition into being a semi carry he's going for that axe build now so it's going to be a long way until he gets it but that's the next that's the plan for him next okay oh, they oh, find carl okay. gonna try and blow him up yeah that's me there oh my god <laughs> Why? <laughs> Jeez. Now they've got the cooldown reduction as well for more. Okay. Well, why not, you know? Yeah, that's silly. It's, it's very silly. He's going to start dishing out even more damage now because uh, he's got that BKB queued up. He's going to want to finish that next, and it means he can be a bit more liberal with his Manta style usage. Those illusions can start doing things for you rather than having to save it for the spirit vessel yeah um i guess the other thing that we got to keep our eyes on with this is that the ags weaver he's three thousand gold away from it so it's going to be a while um but if you get that online there might be some other avenues to like you know save your dp at the, i mean it, it happens so quickly against the morph but you know there's still a chance there's a chance, but I, I'm, I'm not liking it. You know, it's one save, and then then what happens? Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Scepter cooldown is 16 seconds, but I think you're going to get bursted much quicker than that. They're standing underneath a mango tree. This is bold. Uh, silence onto both. They just jump in on. A lot of Chen creeps to soak up this damage. Raven trying to take down one. They take down CML afterwards. Gonna lose Bach. Most likely, the root is there. They get the kill. I mean, I guess the other thing that's worth considering here is that it is still a Chen position three. So, like, this is all on Natsumi. And Natsumi has to be the man. And if he falters, I mean, they've, they've set Natsumi up to carry them. Will he be able to? I mean, all signs point to yes, but... I mean, a silencer as well. He's uh, building a bit more into the sustain for himself. He's picked up a BKB, so he's not just going to get immediately bursted down. Again, like we said previously, there's not too much in the form of stuns right now on Geek Fam outside of the Conker. So right. it's all relatively slow stuff to come through, and that BKB is going to put in a lot of work. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm starting to have some, some feelings here as if there's a chance that things could go awry. Like, you're building a sheep stick on Kunkka now. Um, they're going to have, like... The Grimstroke Soulbind with Sheepstick. We're not seeing a Lincoln's picked up for Morph. He's going for this BKB route instead, which I, again, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm I, I feel like there's, there's a chance that Geek Fam could like win a fight and just run down a lane, maybe with an Aghanims yeah. later, or if like DP goes for a fresher or something. Like one or two situations go wrong, and a Droid could end up losing this game, which 
feels like crazy to me that that just shouldn't be possible given what they've got yeah but uh you know there are weaknesses in the draft as you said if they're able to pick off this morphling what else do they have yeah right, right now he's 350 gold short of buybacks so mm -hmm. needs to be a little bit cautious you could see standing in the trees as opposed to just being able to push lanes out freely it's a little bit of a scary proposition you know you're in such a strong place right now that you don't want to give it up Radiance bottom tower is under attack. And it's Geek Fam that are actually in the lead right now with 1,000 gold. It's still feeling like this is this is a droid's game to lose if they uh, you know are not careful. But it, it's possible. It's not, there have been bigger throws in the history of Dota. That is for sure. Oh yeah, <laughs> no questions there. Nearly finishing up the Hurricane Pike as well with this. Uh, well, there it is for the silencer. And uh, on top of that, you would have to think when he hits level 20, he's going to go for that attack range. So mm. it's basically let Morphling be on the front lines, be unkillable in his BKB. And if they somehow get onto me, at least I've got BKB to be able to protect myself. Right. Yeah. Um, just jumping around a little bit more here. Earthshaker's getting towards his BKB as well. Geek fam wanting to hold on for as much as possible. They've still got the Aegis on Raven, which means a droid don't want to go in and fight him. Uh, also, not to mention the cheese on DP. Does anybody have a spirit vessel and a droid? It doesn't look like it. And that Aegis is about to expire, so I think that's what a droid are waiting for. It's gone. Now they can make something aggressive happen. Okay. Aghanims is also done on Ember Spirit. He's going to be going back for this Octarine afterwards. We are 1,700 gold away from the Weaver Aghanim Scepter. Here we go. Smoke coming up. Let's see if they can find their opening. Geek Fam backing out. Cuckoo up on the high ground with the spider legs. Fissure going to land. Silence afterwards. Natsumi blows up one. Now Carl, or rather Raven, is going to try and take this secondary fight. They buy back there. Position. On the other side, the freezing field doing a good bit of damage. Time lapse back to walk away. Bach taking a good amount of damage. Afterwards, Raven, they miss the chains. And in the midst of all of this, Cuckoo just trying to stand tall. They don't have enough damage for this at all. Completely eviscerate that Death Prophet. Cuckoo did not stand a chance. CM did go down, but any remaining right clicks as they come in with the Echo Slam connection, the kill onto Raven. Finally, they get that godlike streak. A thousand gold going that way. And Natsumi, <laughs> we knew it was eventually going to come, but it doesn't make us like it anymore. My God, this man is so hard to deal with. Just jumping around, waveforms through, triple kill for him. They all have buyback, but this train doesn't stop. You just feel helpless. Like Zephyr, throughout all of that, he knew there was nothing he could do in that team fight. So he's pushing bot, doing the thing that he should do. But at the end of the day, you're a Pospor Weaver that's got a Lotus Orb and a Medallion. You know, not finishing up the Aghanim Scepter in the time when you're coming up against a Shaker Morphling. Eh, like was that the choice i mean and again it, it it feels bad because like the medallion is there to help your team to get roshan and to like hit this timing that you want and then i think it speaks again to the 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 strength of that silencer pick that like he kind of has to go for this lotus orb because otherwise you can't get the time lapse off anyway so it's like i don't know i i I, you feel bad for him it just feels like the draft that silencer pick was so good um and now natsumi with no cares, negative cares. He's gonna waveform back and away. And it looks like a droid will be content just taking that melee rax. Got everything he wanted. He's building up into the Scotty next, so just stats, stats, stats. Oh, wonder if he would potentially consider Satanic, but. Oh, missed. And they forced the BKB there from Cuckoo. So and I guess the they're they're not actually that concerned about uh, backing up. If if anybody yeah. leaves the base, they just blow them up afterwards. They're pinging out Roche, who may respawn in seven seconds, and they've got vision on a DD rune on Eekfam's side. So nothing yet for a droid, but if they saw that, they would be going all in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Trying to go. He's hitting up to his level 25 as well on Morph. So. Yeah, just more things to make him OP. Yeah, it's silly. This hero's insane. I mean, it's really just the Earthshaker that makes this nuts. Um, a Dagon for Ember. He's just trying to go Dagon. 
Uh, they're like, we just gotta blow this guy up. How do we do it? Oh, Natsumi, I'm gonna jump into literally everybody. Rooted for the moment, Fissure. I just, just aggressively in their direction. He's like, who wants them? Get over here, Zephyr. They can't quite get him. Okay. Misses the chains. Time lapse. They're fine. Himself. I don't know about that. Now they've got no time lapse for 30 seconds and they're trying to make something happen. Just 400 gold short of that uh, Aghanim Scepter on Zephyr. Oh. Well, they did get an Aghanim Scepter on Carl now. It's like, it, just throw everything that you can at it. Any type of control at all possible. They have this DD still on Raven for a little while, but it's going to be Roche is the call. A, mm, pause, man. This is the big moment. Question mark? This, this is a big moment. This is a really big moment. Um, yeah, I'm, I want to check Silence's mana pool as well because there's a refresher shard on that Roshan. It's pretty healthy, so if he's able to get two Silences off, I feel very, very bad for Geek Fam's prospect. All right. Um, what do we have? It's 300 gold away from that Aghanims on Weaver. Very frustrating. They have Ags on Kunkka, though. So if he can get in there in time, like Roche is going to fall quickly, but not that quickly. <laughs> Daddy Carl, what's happening? Um, uh, there's some good some good talk going back and forth. I don't think that Adroit know about this Aghanim Scepter yet. On uh, Kunkka? Yes. Yeah. He's gone for the strength on the, uh, the talent tree as well. So just looking to be a little bit more tanky. Still got 3.7k HP. So Kunkka's going to want to be the one that goes oh. in first. But you're right, though. He didn't go for the Torn AoE. That's a little weird. Hmm. Huh. I, I guess that he he wasn't anticipating going for this Ags then, probably. Uh, he's like, oh, this game's going all right. Oh, he's... He's big. He's, he's level 20, and uh, he's a, with a shake. God, I don't even know what you do in this point. I guess Raven just jumps in and, like, pops BKB and tries to live, I guess. Yeah, I'm just watching Cuckoo's perspective, and he's constantly switching around what uh, he's put in his quick buy. Like, he's gone back and forth between Scythe and Dagon and Scythe and Dagon and Lotus Orb. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know what he wants. There's, there's, there's no way to know. It, it's This is such a hard game. Like, this fight has to go absolutely perfectly. And I think the only way that it goes perfectly is if they, like, let Adroit kill Roche, and then they manage to, like, steal the Aegis cheese and Refresher. And even then, yep. it's like, I don't know, it's dubious. Mm. Uh, I just want to see all of this, uh, all of these torrents spawning around the Roche pit. I mean, who? you would have to say Geek Fam fight better in an enclosed space, right? Because you've got the Soulbinds, you've got the Torrent, you've got the Ghost Ship, you've got the Exorcism, Swarm's going to hit onto everything, I mean, Chains are going to hit onto everything. The problem, though, is that they have four BKBs on the Droit. Um... <laughs> on everybody except for Chen, and they're all like 10 second BKBs too, except for the silencers, which is a nine second one. Like, oh man, and CML is actually in a really good spot with this BKB pickup because yeah. you obviously get the bonus armor when freezing fields being used, and he's got the craggy coat, so that's going to be what 41 armor that he's sitting on. And for a lineup that's not too physical based. It's going to be doing a lot of work. There's actually no way that Geek Fam win this fight. I I am going to call it like I'm very very conservative with my my calls of what's going to happen in the future. There is no way in the world that this fight is ever going to be won by Geek Fam. They are going to run into their deaths. That's what's if about to happen. If it does, <laughs> will you chug an entire can of monsters? No, because they don't chug. We don't chug monsters. That's that's a. Uh, I will enjoy one at a very reasonable and healthy pace. That's what, right, I, you that's savor what I'll it. do. Exactly. Savor it. Because, um, oh my god. There, there is no way that they win this fight. Torrent, trying to get the vision. Will I eat my words? Or are they all going to die? Every single one of them. Okay, silenced. Chasing. BKB pops. That's a freezing field. It's doing some pretty good damage. And of God is out. A droid's in there. Mr. Mac, they're actually taking down Roche. Are they going to be able to sneak this one away? Or are they all going to die? Natsumi turns to try and go for the finish. They are already in the midst of them. Boomy gets the Echo Slam on it too. There is a Refresher Shard on the ground. Cuckoo goes in, steals one, pops the Refresher. He's going to pop his second Exorcism now. Is this the formula? Have they actually done it? The turnaround, the kill onto both the Silencer and the CM. Natsumi out of, needs to get out of there. 
the chase down comes. I did, did they actually win the fight? I, don't I know. mean, I don't think you could ask for much better, right? <laughs> I don't think so. They won the fight. I you was savor so that wrong. monster lyrical. Oh, you I'm gonna savor drink it. it. I'm gonna drink it right now. All right, very mm. good. Oh. That was unreal. They just left the the cheese and the refresher shard on the ground. They just they just did it. And now Cuckoo has like a Dagon something crazy. What? Yeah, just a level one right now, but uh, he's definitely got the money to start building up into it. And they have Dagon two on Ember. Wait, who has? So who got the Aegis? Does anybody? Uh, Kunkka. Kunkka has the Aegis. What the hell? They actually did it! Oh, I have never caster cursed so strong before. That was wonderful. Oh, Boomy walks into the torrent? He still has BKB though. Alright, yeah, and they just back out of there. Man. What a turnaround. I mean, it's still an 8,000 gold lead for a droid. Make no mistake, this is not looking amazing for Geek Fam, but there's there's maybe a chance. And I got my wish. We have reached the 40 minute mark, so we're going to see some of those tier four items come into play now. Yeah. Well, and they've also got like this Aghanim Scepter on Weaver. Like there there's there's things here that kind of work. My thrift reward. Yeah, Kanka just hit into his level 25 as well, so go ship fleet. That's going to be like Sharknado basically happening in the middle of these team fights. Torrent Storm, Ghost Ship Fleet. Oh man, you Just see the everything bets. happening. The bets are really close right now, actually. Which I I mean I'd take that in a second. That's, that's crazy. Um but 40 minutes in, 10k net worth lead currently for a droid. But the smoke up now, and it again you, you kinda wonder like how much is of a liability is this Chen? Um, currently level 19 does have Greaves and also went back for the Holy Locket. Rarely seen, but much appreciated. Yeah, I really like it on the Chen. It's, you know, you naturally build into it with some of your items at least, with the, uh, the wand there. Caught out someone? No, they're just looking to take it in a very measured manner. I mean... Pushing in the top side. The fight become very strange now. It's the Ghost Ship Fleet, by the way, for Kunkka. But he can play this aggressive because it's really hard to burst him. I can't believe he just walked in between all of Radiant. Like, they just he literally walked between all of them. And now, they don't have their Kunkka for this fight. And they're just dead on White Maw. Need to back out of there. That's gem on the ground. Oh, God. And Natsumi has the leveler now. Oh, that's spooky. Ooh. Do you want it on him, though? Or do you want the Imp Claw still? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I think uh, I would rather have the Imp Claw for the fight and then leveler for taking buildings afterwards yeah sure but uh i think it's probably not going to get to the stage where you can switch between the two yeah it's like fair. if they win the team fight they're probably going to win the game yeah yeah that's true and carl just walked that through the all of them not. there and he just did not seem to care uh dd yeah. or natsumi we've seen a lot of these this game so far he's gonna have a satanic here in a second now I was wondering when he was going to build into that, and it was actually after the Scotty that he was able to get it. Now, the thing is here on uh, Geek Fan's side, they've got the Aegis still remaining for about 45 seconds. So I thought maybe they were waiting for the Grimstroke to come back up and get something out of it, but that DD just completely changes things. Do we have any other items before we get into this next fight? Um, they've got the Prince's Knife on the Weaver. That's pretty cool with Lashako. Conker's caught out. Oh. Ags? They've still got Ags well, Weaver. He got the use out of the uh, Aegis, at least. They're going to jump onto him. Ags Weaver's available. Needs to use it now. Time lapse him back. Carl still in living. Oh. Echo Slam connecting onto two. They're going to try and take down the Weaver. Zephyr able to get the four step away. Is going to be controlled and killed off by Natsumi. Godlike right now. They have the Torrent Storm dealing a decent amount of damage. Buyback from the Weaver. Carl is eventually going to drop, but they have the buyback for him afterwards. Raven turns to fight, but they just don't have enough damage. And they're trying to run some people down here. Chase forward, looking for the Ember. Carl and Raven ready to run in on this one. Cuckoo in a little bit of trouble himself. They need to time-lapse a lot of different people. Zephyr seeing what he can do. CML 
popping the freeze in field, running away. And with the two buybacks, it looks like that might be the end of it. No, Natsumi just jumps onto both. Wants to take down another, takes down White Mon, not able to get that time lapse off in time. Spirit Vessel, connection off to the side. They still holding on to Satanic. There is just too much damage, too much sustain, and not Sadaka nearly enough does. damage. Carl is going to drop and looking for a bit more. Finds Cuckoo back behind enemy lines, building whatever Dagons they possibly can, but it is not enough damage. Two minutes dead for the Kunkka. And it's time to type those two magical letters, GG, as they end it. Adroit, 44 minutes in. Morph Shaker, eat your heart out. Yeah, Blast from the past coming through, and Adroit looking very, very confident, continuing their trend of being very strong in the SEA region. And uh, Geek Fam, a little bit out of sorts. I mean, again, it was one of those games where, I don't know, that the Zephyr Weaver, maybe it was just a little bit of trial you know it's the first game of this series uh, of this tournament for them right they wanted to try something new I, I i don't know i don't think you can do that when you're coming up against someone who's on a similar playing level like uh, adroit r against you yeah well and i think that it, it again felt to me like that fourth pick silencer really like sort of uh, not necessarily put the nail in the coffin, but made it really hard for their draft. And I think that like what you're talking about there of that Weaver, it kind of it it they drafted themselves into a box almost where like this is this is what our draft does. We sit behind the Death Prophet, let her go to town, have a good laning stage, and then the silencer is like, Well, you can't do that at the timing that you want anymore because you have to go for this Lotus Orb first. So now your entire strategy is done. Um and I, I just feel like that was such a good pick that and 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 geek fam drafting themselves into a position where they didn't they didn't have any outs. You got to give yourself some outs in a draft. Yeah, and uh, just as well on that, the crystal maiden pick I thought was fantastic. Yeah. It meant that uh, you know it completely deals with the weaver. Just with that frostbite, you become like paper for uh, your other teammates to destroy. And uh, the ember spirit actually didn't even end up going for the um, the yule scepter. He had to go straight into the BKB to stop a lot of this damage from coming through onto him. So yeah. It's uh, a rough position for them to be in and well drafted by Adroit. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for day number one of the Southeast Asia BTS Pro Series. Uh, again, we'd like to give a quick little shout out to our sponsors. Thank you, of course, to Monster, keeping us energized through these late nights and early mornings and whatever else, wherever are, you are in the world. Uh, and then, of course, Loot.Bet, the official betting partner for the BTS pro series uh we're gonna be back again same time same place hopefully for a little bit longer games of dota uh because you know that's that's a, a fun thing to have um for later on today if you guys are interested in what's happening the bts pro series america is going to continue on starting out with business associates versus cloud nine that game's going to start in about nine hours from right now uh, and then afterwards you've got furia versus thunder predator so those are the two games that are going on there uh, a little bit later on today, uh, nine hours, as I said. And then uh, for us for tomorrow, um, we've got another two for series tomorrow uh, with Boom ID versus Reality Rift and then Fnatic versus T1. So those games should be pretty awesome as well. Uh, Dan, thank you again so much for casting with me. Any final words you want to you wanna sign off with? Where can people find you? Uh, just find me on Twitter, at Dan Ogdota. That's the main place. Um, oh, I suppose for C people, a lot of them use... Uh, a lot of them use Facebook, so just look up Danog there. And uh, I'm really excited for tomorrow because I think the the biggest improver across the board is probably Boom ID. So I'm interested to really? see how they're going to fare. What what about them? What what's 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 been improving as we look at your lovely face with your ice cream? <laughs> ah, very good. Uh, I, damn. Now, now I'm going to get an ice cream after this as well. Do it. Uh, I mean, I think throughout all the DPC, they always seem to get. Like, they've always been an invite to the qualifiers, right? And right. then they got through probably to, like, the minor qualifier stage, and then they got knocked out. And then they made it to the minor. And then they made it further in the minor. So they just keep progressing more and more. It's kind of the same trend line as Adroit, just okay. maybe a few months behind. So I'm interested to see if they can continue that positive momentum moving forward. All right. I can dig it. Um, we'll, we'll see if they can make it happen. Uh, I think that C is definitely getting better, and it's... Uh, it's going to be an interesting time for us. Uh, again, uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, I'm going to switch back over off my... Uh, oh, God. Sorry. Sorry, I accidentally ran the ad. My bad. Uh, I wanted to show you guys real quickly the groups that we've got going as well uh, and what to 
today is finally going to end up looking like. So we'll just update these briefly, give Adroit the one, and then poor old Geek Fam are also going to be one, but in the loss column. Uh, so that's what the groups are looking like after one day of play. Uh, top four in this whole series um, are going to be moving on in the upper bracket for the playoffs that happen a little bit later on. Uh, and then bottom two are going to be just out. So they're out of there. Uh, and then the the other two right now would be inhabited by Reality Rift and T1. Uh, obviously, it's just the way that it's set up right now. Alphabetically. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, that, that would be the two teams that uh, go through in the lower bracket. So a lot of Dota still to play. Uh, round Robin means that these games are going to be going on from now, April 10th. Uh, until April 22nd, and we'll be here through some portion of that, whatever that portion ends up being. Uh, but hope you guys enjoy it again, and uh, we're going to be taking down the stream in a little bit, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. In the meantime, go watch some Dota, go play some Dota, and see you guys later. Catch ya.